Good evening and a very warm welcome to Rangers Radio. Hello, good evening and welcome. Welcome to Rangers Radio. Join myself, Fox Jr. on the show tonight as young JM and the Queen of Rangers Radio. No, it's not Southside, it's your Linda. How are we doing, JM? How are we doing, Linda? Uh, guys, yep, yeah, good, thanks. How about yourselves? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, any battle fever kicked in yet? Any battle fever kicked in yet, young JM? Yeah, just just started to just it's gonna sneak up a little bit. That bank holiday weekend coming in, hopefully it makes the week go a little bit quicker, but just starting to dial up the now. Bowing up, bowing up. Building up, building up. Evening, Linda, how are you? Evening everyone. I hope you're all well. How are you doing, Linda? Yeah, I'm nerves, well. Nerves kicking in yet? Oh, just just a wee tad, Jocks. Just a wee tad. Trying not to think too far ahead. Taking one one day at a time. Lena Martel. <laughs> Something like that. I'm sure you that just went right to your JM's head. Eh? <laughs> oh, you won't see, but I'm just nodded. <laughs> Chained and steel and violence and crime. Oh. Uh, sounds like Fox, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Oh right, yeah, just get your views quickly on Saturday's performance. Uh, everything's going to turn full steam ahead uh, to uh, Sunday because, let's be honest, it's the biggest league game we've played in a long, long time, if we're honest. Yeah. So, thoughts on Saturday. Linda, on you go. Well, I mean, it was a... It wasn't a, a vintage performance, uh, I don't think, Ox. Um, but it was absolutely crucial that uh, we got the win and the three points, and, and I think that's what it's all about. Um, I thought we scored three really good goals. You know, um, Tav recovered from his penalty miss, brilliant volley. Dessers was a good goal, and then uh, Matondo coming on with his wee cameo and a terrific finish. Um, the goal we conceded, Ox, was disappointing. Um, we keep conceding these types of goals, don't we? Um, you know, one where the op- the opposition doesn't really need to work very hard, it would seem, you know. Um, but overall, just a vital win, Ox. I was about the three points, and I suppose if I said to you before the game started, Jaya, would you take a 3-1 victory? Your answer would have been... Absolutely, yes, would have been. Yeah, I agree. Yes. With, I agree with Linda. I don't think it was the most vintage performance, to be honest. Slightly disappointed. I didn't think, you know, I think everyone would agree we definitely ran out of steam going into the international break. Maybe it was just too much expectation, but I just didn't feel we looked as refreshing up as I would have liked to. But also maybe a bit of rustiness because we hadn't played in, you know, 10 days or so. I they played for, since it been Fika again. Yeah. Yeah, forgetting about forgetting about obviously the uh, yeah. the can, the council fixture and that as well. So yeah, you know so pros they, and they, cons. We had they played in sixteen days, no? Yeah, you know, but listen, there was times we looked rusty, there was times we played some good stuff, and there was times we made wrong decisions, particularly running about the box, but the goals we scored under the three of them are crackers. Yeah, definitely Ox and you know, Scott Wright was a bit, was a, obviously unlucky, wasn't he? That he didn't get the goal and the follow up to the penalty. I mean, that encroachment carry on. Um, I don't know, but it, there's a big debate about what the rules are, and I don't know whether it should have been a retake because both of the players, you know, the Hibs player and him, were, were just over the line. But um, I felt a bit sorry for him because I know he's he doesn't you know he doesn't get ten out of ten when he plays, you know, by any man of the means. But I thought he did all right and. Um, he looked quite bright in the first part of the game, Ox. Uh, he was unlucky, Scott, right? Um, uh, he was sort of playing in there, the inside right channel, Jai Emin. He timed his run pretty much to perfection, I suppose. That's the downside of that. I've still not seen a picture that is conclusive that he was the guy, the most forward guy in that move. But anyway... 
you could argue if we'd have got that goal, we might not get Tav's goal. So, uh, but a bit of sympathy for Scott Wright. I don't think he's trying to gain an advantage there. Eh? No, it's one of them rules are rules, and if they can prove it, but um, they leave you. Also, what am I trying to say? They always make you doubt them, don't they? Because even when it could be right, you're just thinking what could be wrong. Because like you said, Linda says this question with the rule. It looks like maybe a couple of his players could have definitely have been closer, which is, as I'm led to believe, would mean if Tab was near was the Mr. Penalty, he gets to retake it. Kind of a mess and you don't really get you don't get clarity either, do you? But no, he was unlucky and also I thought a little bit unlucky trying to place it and got the one kicked off the line, didn't he? So she on another day, Scott Wright would have had a couple of goals. Should have scored there. But you think it should have hit it harder? Oh, he hit it like uh, somebody I know used to play in midfield. You know, but what, what, I, think the, I think defenders would say if the defender doesn't cover, it's in the back of the net, though, isn't it? Aye, of course, but it's just, he should have scored. For me, Linda, he should have scored. Aye, I think he should have scored. And he could see with his reaction, he was he was disappointed. He, he just doesn't get the, the shot away cleanly. Um, you know, there's a quite a few. There's a few players like that just now. Ox, maybe just no getting the cleanest of hits, aren't they not? No, oh. no. There's a. Uh, you, know, you, you need to take your chances, cover your chances, and I get it, JM. I get your point that he hit the target. He, he regard he's done everything right, right, just the defenders clear it. I get that. For me, I think he should have scored. It's just the way you see it, and I'm, I'm not saying that because it's Scott Wright. You know, if it was Stephen Davis, as I've been saying, he should have scored then. You know, it's got a it's something in the last two games, if I'm honest, Jay. Well, I was just about to say, because I want you to be going to think on Scott Wright, if you like, that's the the two games, the Benfica game and the Hibs game, where you could argue he's been in the top, if you like, 10, 20% of the players on the pitch. He's been, you know, he's impacted, done more than others, tried, especially for what we expect, and he's been involved and in maybe unlucky not to get a few goals. So, fair play, don't get me wrong, you'd, want better on your right wing consistently throughout the season but fair play to him for not hiding and having a go yeah 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 so we get the goals uh, great goal by Tavernier we discussed him a lot at length last night uh, just a machine wonder where his, his stats are frightening yeah ter- terrific performance um, is that 131 overall goals he's got, isn't he? Ox, that was made him the highest scoring defender in Britain. And I think for us, it's a, I saw a stat the days at 123 goals he scored. Yeah, 123 so, goals. Yeah, eh? it's it's unbelievable. And I know, um, you know, you get some some fans from other teams saying <laughs> he only scores penalties. Well, there was a wee selection of these penalties doing the round on social media the last couple of days and there wasn't a penalty amongst it. Some of these free kicks and crucial goals, the goals that he scored in Europe for is, you know, match winning goals. One of the most crucial ones he scored has happened this season in the League Cup final. So, you know, Tavernier for me is, you know, Pound by pound, he's one of the best signings we've ever made, Ox. And if he'd maybe had some better players around him at times, um, I don't want to be overcritical of the signings, but he might have won more trophies. And I know sometimes that's what's labelled at him, but I think he's been a, he's, he's been an unbelievable signing. And yes, sometimes he could defend better, and he, he admitted that about Saturday as well. However, what he gives you in the attacking side of his game is, is just fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with that, Linda. I've said that before. If you name go through some of the start in elevens, especially at the start of Tavernier when he's at Rangers, it's um it's no shock he didn't win many trophies. I'd definitely say there's been worse right backs for Rangers that have won more. Lovely. Um if you compared if you compare them they with better defenders, and maybe not so good going forward, you know. Uh, Gary Stevens was at his point was a superb player. You've had Sandy Jardin had played there. The game had changed. The game had changed. It was in that that position's changed the fullback position. But just the number of goals. Forget about the penalty kicks. You know, just the number of goals is pretty frightening and big goals uh, he scored. But I think for me, his best goal. I said it last night, and I'll say it again. His best goal might have been in that Petra Cup final. I'll be back then. <laughs> it might have been good. against anybody else. <laughs> uh, any other competition, the goal that he scored that day at Hamden, 
but it's just it, it doesn't matter the, the technique and what he done was was frightening and fair play him. Yeah. And the whole, the, and by the way, the whole the whole thing, the fact that it was deliberate, even from the setup, from it, even the setup was a good setup. It was all deliberate. The whole goal, it you aye, should aye. be more to be honest. The flick from Miller was very good as well. It was deliberate and a setup, and it, yeah, it should be seen more to be honest. Yeah, Under. yeah, yeah. I would, I would agree, Ox, and um, he forgets some of the goals. I mean, his first goal for us as well was that against Hibs? Was that away at Easter Road? That the first goal he scored. Ah, his first game, his debut. Yeah, his debut goal, um, his debut game, and that goal he scored and. You just thought, wow. And I don't think he had been that prolific a scorer, obviously. He obviously hadn't been a prolific scorer before that, and he's spoken about that because um, he never really settled at the one club box, didn't he? You know, he moved about quite a bit in there. He'd only scored eight goals. He'd only scored eight goals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he wasn't even, like, prolific for even... He didn't even get them for the one team or anything or in the one spell. It was very sporadic. Because um, he never, as he said, I think he said before, he, he never settled down. He was always out on loan, and this is the first time he's had any. Obviously, this is his first big club, really. Um, and as I said earlier, he came in at a time where we were trying to get ourselves back to the the top of the tree, weren't we, in Scotland? So um, I don't know. I think he's probably surprised himself about how well he's done on, on the goal scoring front, anyway. Um, but I just wonder about his penalties now. Oh. His record in the last few isn't it great, but no. listen, if we got a penalty kick, we five minutes to go on Sunday, and the game was on an ice edge. Who are you throwing the body, Jaya? That's a good question. I'm glad I'm not picking. <laughs> and I, think, and I, oh, I genuinely don't know. Um, Come on. Get, the captain, yeah, the captain. Just because odds, I, I find it well to miss three or four in a row. He's got to put one in. I'll play the odds. He's got to score one. Wonder who you throwing it to? I just hope he doesn't listen to his wife this week. <laughs> That's always um, a mistake. Always um, a mistake. I would agree. I would agree. Um, don't, don't listen to his wife. Um, I'm, I, I'm giving it to Tav. I just think. Um, he did that once before when Morelis, he gave him the ball, remember? And, and at that point, I don't know if it was because Tav had missed penalties at that point or it was because Morelis had missed so many chances in that game that he wanted to take the penalty. I think Morelis um, had took maybe one or two in the build-up to that game. I did. Tav, Tav had missed him. I think actually um, Arfield took the penalty. Really? I, I, don't think, I think Tav had missed and I think Arfield took a penalty before Morelos did if I remember rightly. Right. Tav had missed a couple and Arfield took one and actually had it saved and scored. And then I think it was a bit of Arfield and then who's going to take this one, basically? I think it was a bit of mismanagement on that one, the whole right. thing. I Tav don't think there was really a clear who was taken. Tav should have stood up. Tav should have stood up that day. But anyway, who are you throwing it to, Linda? A, a Tav, I would say Tav, yeah. And so if we get one on Sunday, definitely. Kind of believes he's only thrown it to CD9. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I wouldn't want to put that on him, Ox, because I don't. I wouldn't want to put that on us. I know. You know, and, and even though I thought he was man in a match at the weekend, I did. I thought he was our best player. Jaya? Yeah. No, he, he kept asking him questions, didn't he? he? Worked hard, and that you know his link up was better than it normally was. Obviously, it was a great header. It looks easy when it comes off because that ball was hit really hard, and he's got a reacting time. You know, there's fine margins for that. I mean, he's missed plenty of them, hasn't he? He's shown how easy it is to miss them. So it was, you know, he's put that away. So no, he he done his job, didn't he? And again, did I see something? Like, it was a stat about um, I can't remember the exact stat, but about consistently scoring in Premier League games. Aye, aye, aye. He, he was up there with Perso and another, wasn't he? The only one to do it to to score it to score maybe in four and a bounce or something. I think his numbers are pretty good. It's just that it's the big chances he's had running through Linda one and one. It's caused caused this the support they you know, say, come on, take the easy ones and your numbers would be double what he's got. Yeah, it's absolutely no doubt about that, Ox. I think what's he got? Six seventeen. I mean you could at least add another you know, 
you could Something double it, right? But that might be <laughs> slightly optimistic, right? But see even another eight to ten clear cut chances. What I don't understand them about this whole running through and goal is that he, he insists on taking it on his left side. He always seems to want to take it with his left foot. Now he might be quite good with in his left foot. But surely your stronger side is your right hand side when you drive towards the keeper, you take it away from him. Um but I know you'll you'll come on to it, but the chance that he missed in the second half on Saturday, I, as a centre forward, you've got to be scoring that one. I've done everything right and then just screwed it past the post, Jay, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he he was a, he was unlucky. Well, not unlucky, Missy. Like you say, he should have scored. He done all the build up right, great play. Like to be honest, he's done a lot. Linda's right. He's got um, he's got his trick, hasn't he? I don't think it matters what side he goes on. He likes to give the defenders and the uh, the goalkeeper the dummy a bit, like he did at Betis, and that he um, that's his trick, isn't it? Put the goalkeeper on the ground and try and cut it back. And um, sometimes it comes off. Sometimes he can make himself look stupid. Here you go, all, 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 the, uh, all foxes dug out a stat. Here's one for you. If Taff scores, I'm going to, I need to read this out. If Taff scores against them on Sunday, we'll have scored uh, 23 goals this season. In one season, Bill and Mimiro scored 22 in his entire career. Well, there you go. Right. But Billy knew. He knew as well. Anyway. Anyway, aye. Pretty frightening, really. Uh, aye, so we must... Uh, Tavo scores more goals. More goals and more goals. Uh, and then we can go on and win this league. But first of all, we need to get Sunday out of the way. And it's going to be nervy. Uh, we have to take more chances, Jay Emma. Yeah, hundred percent nervy. Um, definitely nervy. a little bit nervy because I think even Clement said it, and I'm not sure if I'm happy about or if it's trying to you know motivate. But we're definitely not at our full best either. We're not at the best we can be at the moment. Hundred percent. Maybe before the before the break ran out a bit of steam injuries. We've got you know the num the names look okay on paper on the bench now, but these players aren't up to speed either. So we're not going in full strength. So that is starting to make me nervous. Okay, aye, aye, aye. We're going to have pretty much um, the majority of our players uh, available for selection, Linda, but there's a few of them ring rusty, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I think it would only really be maybe Danilo, Cortez, and, and Jack that would be out, wouldn't it? And we don't know about Red Fan, but you're right. He's, he's, this is the most he's had to pick from for, for a long time, Ox. But you're right, he's not got. I feel, you know, the rest of them are not up to full match fitness. And I think he was talking about how he's looking at his squad and some can play 20 minutes, some can play 45, some can play an hour. He must be looking forward to the day when the majority of them he could play, play for 90 minutes because it, I know we've said this on numerous, numerous occasions, Ox, it's quite remarkable what he's done with what's been available to him. Yeah, 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 it has. Right, okay. Um, a wee announcement. Uh, a wee announcement. Listen, we were good friends at uh, Go Bathrooms. Our relationship is, uh, grew from nothing um, uh, through our big Stevie for Drum Chapel, um, a mutual friend. I uh, have kindly, kindly donated a ticket for uh, Sunday's game to Rangers Radio. Yes. But they asked if we could maybe raise for a uh, a charity, maybe raise some money. So what we've done, uh, it's the Emmy Smiley Foundation again, which uh, most Rangers supporters will know the work that the Smiley family do for the, the Rangers family. Um, so uh, we've set up a shop uh, again, and you can go to, let me just get this right, shop.rangersradio.online and it's all set up uh, and we're going to just do it as a raffle we'll get a number and then we'll sort it we'll sort it sometime this week when we see how the raffle's gone to draw the raffle and then when we get the winner we'll make arrangements and they can collect the ticket on Sunday 
Uh, so we just can't kind of thank go red, go but go radio, go bathrooms enough uh, for doing that for us, and obviously we're giving us the opportunity to raise some money because we haven't really done anything for charity this year, and we like to make years Linda. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, what are what are we? It's really really great of them to actually do that, and you know. It's just if people can afford to do it, and it would be great for to raise as much money as we can. Ox, um, a brilliant, a brilliant donation. Well done. Aye, well, I know. Listen, it's a if you don't buy a, a ticket, you carry one. JM, somebody's going to win it. No, I just said it's a great chance for somebody that might not normally get a chance to go due to ticket allocations or whatever. So raise some money for a good cause, or even put in and raise it and try and get a power along when it get to go. So no, great cause all round. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll just read it's £10 a ticket, the raffle ticket, uh, and we'll see how it goes um, and how many we're going to sell, and then we'll announce tomorrow night how it's gone and we'll build it up as the week goes on. So it's shop.rangersradio.online. So get yourself on there, £10. Somebody's going to win it. Somebody's going to win it. Yeah. So thanks once again. To our good friends at Go Bathrooms, and I'm sure it'll be mentioned tomorrow night when the Chuckle Brothers are on. Wonder. <laughs> I'm sure it will. I'm sure Stevie's already building up his speech. Oh dear. We said Go Bathroom, and we'd never get bridge on for 15 minutes. He thought he was away. <laughs> he thought it was a break, Jayam. Yeah, he carried on. Stevie the the influencer. Uh, Stevie the influencer. <laughs> He's certainly that. He's certainly that. Right, okay, so we'll part we'll, we'll part Saturday. Three good goals. Six and a half out of ten performance. Is that fair? Yep. Yep, I'd I'd agree. I'd agree with that. Aye, right, six and a half out of ten. Some players maybe seven, seven and a half, others six, yeah. Because at, at times, you know, it's like a collectively, but it looked a bit rusty. Rid of the cobwebs, all systems go for Sunday, Linda, yeah? Yeah, definitely, Ox. Um, I feel weak of training ahead of them as well. Some of them will get more, you know, fitness about them, getting themselves back in with the squad as well. Um, great to see Seema back. Um, unlucky he didn't get his goal at the end when he was through uh, one and one with the keeper. Um, I think um, that was just him being a wee bit rusty there as well. But that's another option for the manager. I'm not saying in any way, shape or form he'll throw, he'll throw him into the starting 11 or anything, Ox. But the bench is looking a lot stronger now, I think. Yeah, if, if they were off fit, we get some competition for places, Giant. But we know they can only do this. He can do this, he can do that. But... Uh, Good to see Seema back. Matondo come on, who was a bit the international squad, so we'll go ahead soon. He's fit. Big Sterling come on. I'm a fan. Southside, does they see it? It's funny how people see the game different. Now, I'm not saying Southside, does they see he's a player? He thinks he's a right back. Yeah, that's what he thinks. Chayam. Yeah, he's definitely versatile and you get a lot of players like that who maybe suffer from not having a position or they come handy for the manager to mess about Um Insert, I'd agree, maybe right back might be his best position, but there are certain games definitely due with the squad we have and maybe some of our opposition. I'd, I'd love to see him in the middle of the pitch as well. I'm, I can see arguments from the play in both positions. How do you stand in his best position, Linda? Well, I don't know. I think... <laughs> Right back, we've hardly, we've not even seen him there, which is ironic because he was supposed to be brought to to be cover for Tav. But they uh, try to shift Tav out the team even for ten minutes in the game. Same, it just doesn't seem to happen. He seems to have played quite well when he sat maybe a, as a holding player, more a defensive midfielder. Ox, um, I know he did all right when they moved him over to the left back, but I just think. You know, a right-sided, right-footed player playing left-back there on Sunday, I, I'm not sure. 
Um, I, I tend to think maybe the, the kind of a more defensive midfielder position might be his best. But as I said there, Ox, we've never really even seen him at right back so far. No, he's had a few cameos, but no one running the team. And I think we, we, I think we answered earlier on the reason why, Jay. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, Tavernier's not giving him a sniff, has he? he the, bloke's, the bloke's never injured. He never never lets you down. There's never an obvious reason to drop him. Um, no, you, you've got, you'd have, you have to be really patient at Rangers to get an opportunity to play at right back, don't you? I just, I just think that because he's so big and so mobile, he's, he's great to have in the middle of the pitch as well. I think he's a real leveller for us in other games where maybe teams try and out-muscle us or even out-pace us at times. What I think, Linda, is his pace. I like. I mean, he's got that power as well and aggression, and you know, and he obviously scored a goal away in Benfica. You know, and if he can add that uh, creativity and goals to his game, I'm not saying he's going to be a sulky player, but just maybe the odd final pass and getting in the box and scoring the odd goal. It's the it's how quickly he gets to the opposition players. That's what I like, and I think yeah. it gives him a problem. And they look at him and they go, right. A, I'm going to struggle with you this guy, and B, I'm going to struggle to get away from you. And that, people know that, and they, they work it out in the game, and I just think he's an asset. Just my opinion. Yeah. Just my P- opinion. Pace, pace and power, and, and the pace, as you see, over a few yards in the midfield is a big trait. You know, it's good if you've, if you've got blistering pace in other parts of the field ox but in that midfield if you're quick over a few yards and you're powerful it's quite a it's quite a weapon to have he's also the sort of player that hopefully uh, Clement can actually develop even further ox I think he's the sort of guy that Clement will be relishing working with does he start for you Jaya on Sunday Yes, hundred percent. Wonder. I'm not sure. Oh, oh. I don't think he does for me, Ox. Um, Come on, Linda, get off that fence. I know. I think I would. I would go if if he was going to be playing as a defensive midfielder. I don't. I don't think he dislodges Diomandi or Lundstrom there. I'm a bit worried about him playing left back. As I said, he's right footed in a game like Sunday. I'm not sure about that. And also on the right hand side, I think there could be maybe one other player that might get the nod ahead of him. So but I think he might have a part. Come on to then, play who? Who? On the on, on the right hand side. Aye. I think I think he'll, he might go with Scott right there. Oh, wonder. Thanks for the call. It's been nice <laughs> talking. <to you. laughs> Right. Look at the last three games. Aye, and also Scott Wright started in Seville. I'll never forget it. I still, forget, I still blame him for that cross getting in, but that's maybe just me, Jay. Uh, maybe may we were clutching now, and um, yeah, let's not let's not let's not go back to that. Let's but, for but I'm, I'm going to I'm going to argue about it. Up for me, um, due to the, the last few games, I watched the the young lad as well, and uh, for me, I would be bringing in Sterling in place of Diamande to start the game. And I'm getting kind of, and I'm getting flashbacks, different environments, different situations and times, but I'm getting flashbacks to a young Diallo starting there and being a bit blown away by the atmosphere of the game and the importance. It's and no, I'm, it's not, I don't see Diallo, I see Tillman. Yes, probably, maybe a fairer comparison could of the positions as well and maybe getting lost and maybe I just think these games are level of both teams aren't at their best, I think. Although you want to go in the arrogance of the best and play your, if you like your best players, I think there's a serious horses for cautions and let's earn the right to sort of run the game. And I think Big Stern is the man to do that. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Right, you better get these phone lines out. We're chatting away here quite the time for getting this a phone in show. And we'll ask the, the, the listeners out there, would they start stumbling? Yes or no? That's, that's a simple one to get people in under, isn't it? Yes, and where would you start them though? Aye, aye, aye. Uh, well, that's fair enough. So, would you and where? Yeah, that sounds terrible. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <they're> awful. <laughs> right, would you and where? But we'll, we'll ask the listeners, but 
would you would you and where would you play Sterling? Uh, let's hear from you. Why don't you give us a call on 0141 356 1972? It's your show, it's your platform. Let's hear from you. Aye. Aye. Ops, can I can I explain my Scott right uh, <laughs> comment earlier there? Uh, all right, you might want to lie on that couch. <laughs> <laughs> um, if everybody's fit and able to start and play ninety minutes, Scott right maybe wouldn't even make the bench. <laughs> but when you look at the games recently and you look at who's available to start the game. That's my, my sort of ideology behind it on the right-hand side. That's why I'm saying don't, I wouldn't be surprised to see him on Sunday. But if everybody's fit and firing, he's definitely not in the start of 11. But that's, I hope that explains it all right. Listen, um, if he would have went through the middle and scored that goal against Benfica when he had that good run, Jaya, and then he gets that goal uh, on Saturday there, for the rebound and his overall play had been what it was like in the two games. People were saying Scott Wright's worth a start. Yeah, you know, I, I get that. Yeah, he's been in, like you say, just little bits of luck and that. He's been involved in as much of his games as others, but yeah, again, Matonda's on the pitch for 15 minutes and gets a goal, doesn't he? You've still got to, pro- you've still got to produce. And although it's been better, but I agree, Linda, if maybe if everybody was fit, he wouldn't be near the conversation, but I don't know if there's actually anybody fit to play. Maybe Matondo's here, but if the manager's going to consider anybody fit enough to play, say, an hour, which you expect your players to start the game to do? A lot of people are talking about Tom Lawrence being on the park with Cantwell, and I can get that maybe if you're playing more about home, you maybe have one sitter and try and promote me to your mere free roll. Lawrence maybe can back about 18 months as an excellent game on the right side. In Eindhoven, uh, that night we qualified for the Champions League. I know it's in a distant memory, Linda. Would you consider that, or is his lack of pace maybe a problem in that position? No? Yeah, I think it's his lack of pace is a problem, and I think the manager he wants to have width and he wants pace there, and um, he's not really got that with Silva on the other side as a start. We understand that, but I, I, I do agree that. You know, Silva's a good footballer, but he's not like, for example, when Matondo came on, you know, he, had, he injected a wee bit of pace into the left-hand side. So if you went with Lawrence, you're not going to have any pace on that right-hand side either. So I don't know, Ox, I can see your thinking um, behind it, but he seems to like width and he definitely likes to have a bit of pace on one of the flanks. Um, and Rabi's definitely better on the left-hand side. That's where he plays Ox. Um, I mean, I think we've tried him before on the right and it didn't work, so I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? Aye. It's a puzzle. The manager likes a puzzle, J.M. Yeah, you get the feeling he actually in some sick way enjoys it, don't you? <laughs> we, don't, but he, he seems to sit there and he kind of reads about it, doesn't it? It doesn't, it doesn't bother him. He's fair and he sort of deals with it, doesn't he? And that's what you want. You don't want excuses. You want someone that you know is just worried about the players he can pick, not looking for excuses before it starts. And for excuses, you know, he just wants fair play, level playing field and go on with it, you know. Uh, by the way, it's, it's pretty embarrassing watching some of the stuff that's coming out in the media. Are you enjoying it, Linda? OK, we knew the fun and games and... With that announcement today, it was uh, it's absolute classic stuff, and you know you've got to maybe commend the SFA. They've no, they've not hidden of the ops in terms of their choices. But um, welcome to our world because uh, we've gone to Parkhead. We have a few crackers in charge before, haven't we? I've been, I've been away from the world today. Has it been announced? What have I right, Have a guess. Have a guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, what have we got, Clancy? All right, think Team Castle. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, they've given it. Oh, they've given us the Don, have they? No, 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 no. no. Who, who was in the oh, bar? Who was? Who, who was doing? Who was? Oh, um, beat. Yes. 
Yeah. Is he is he ref in the game? Yes. <laughs> what and Robertson in the bar swapped him out. Yes. He's coming on the show in fifteen minutes, so be <laughs> <game. laughs> Brother brother beaten, is he? Good on. He's bought oh that what, does he want his ten pound refunded for the draw? <laughs> We're going to have to refund him for the raffle. <laughs> OK, we've got it. We've got it. Referee John Meaton. Uh, Daniel McFarlane. Dougie Potter. He must be doing the... the uh, they're the linesman. And then the, we have the fourth official of a Mr William Cobb. Who's a thankful <laughs> task, the old fourth official. Yo. And then in VAR we have... Nick Walsh in AVR, whatever that means. Assistant. Assistant. Yeah, assistant. yeah well done. Yeah, the cheers, Linda. I bet, you never, I bet you they never paid a tether to get into the game with a raffle ticket. <laughs> <laughs> AVR, so they need an assistant to help them watch the telly. Brilliant. Right, so that is Frank Connor. Mm-hmm. There we go. So remember the referee used to turn up myself and maybe two linesmen. Look at us, what? We've got a fourth official and two of our men, oh dear. All right. Anyway, listen. Uh, it's up to it's all about players, it's all about putting the ball in it. Yeah, you want the decisions to be right and you want you want the you want to get the rub of the green as well, but uh listen, oh some people are just going nuts, Linda, aren't they? Oh definitely. Yeah, watch what I say, I may get arrested. Oh are you better? You better BGK Rowling. Yes, you better watch. Super this. Ali. Super Ali's in it and all. Yeah, you. Did you, he was good earlier. When did you hear him? <laughs> They'd be arresting 50, 49,000 of them <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> the world's gone mad, Ox. Metal. Metal. My metal. You thought it was something. Have a word with him. <laughs> the pony. Getting arrested. Oh, oh, there was dear. a knock at the door. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I was wet, Meryl. Meryl. By the way, was like, there was a guy on Newsnight. I digress. But there was a guy on Newsnight who said they should shut it down. And I couldn't agree, Meryl. Devolution. Nah. Right, anyway, that's another story. Yes, that's right. a whole show on its own. Oh, it's a different show, but oh, dear. All the chicks running in the asylum. Um, where were we? <laughs> the referee. The referee. Well, wish him all the best. We would have problems with John, and I'll be honest with you, but if anybody who's listening to the other side of the city right, wants to go back and watch the game when Ryan Jack sent off, I think it was... Uh, was it Warburton? Kachina? Kachina? No, what, what, Hibs at home? Aye. One of the worst referee performances the, the ever. One when he booked, the one when he booked Morelos for being clothesline. Aye, aye. Is that the one when um, that, um, it was that um, Darren McGregor to play for us, wasn't it? Aye, Darren McGregor, rug, aye. Rug, Rugby tackled him mid-air and then gave a foul against Morelos. Yeah. Aye, aye. Watch that. And then go back to, we can go back to the Aberdeen game. When the, I think it was Tavany, I never even touched the boy and then the boy... Boys doing well for Spurs this year. What's his name? Oh, Madison, yeah. It was never a, it was a hell of a free kick, but never a free kick. Never a free kick. Never a free kick. Listen, every team's got examples of that, Linda, aren't they? Yeah. You know, you've had bad decisions against you, but it's all about, you know, now, now they've had all these league titles, everybody's against them. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, Ox, we've covered it before, and I'm, I'm glad Bridge maybe isn't the on the night when we talk about the standard of refereeing. Um, because it is poor in this country and it's it's poor for everybody. Everybody, as you said, can point out decisions that have gone against them and decisions that are baffling. But it just seems to be that at times when Rangers get decisions, like, for example, the penalty on Saturday, there was still a debate about that. You know, there was one particular guy on BBC uh, Radio Scotland that went apoplectic when that penalty was given. But within the laws of the game, it was a foul on Suter and it's a penalty. Um, But yeah, you're right. There's been decisions for all the teams across this season that have have been, you know, harsh or just basically not right. 
Um, and I hope that the referee beaten on Saturday and Sunday just stays strong as well. That if there's big decisions to be made it, for either team or against either team, that he's big enough to make them. Um, and I hope we're not talking about the referees after the game on Sunday, Ox. No, no, I hope we're talking about, about CD9 uh, getting his <laughs> first hat trick for Rangers. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful, Ox. Uh, you celebrate that. JM, uh, you want the game to be talking about. Um, obviously, a big game, there, there might be decisions, controversy, we will look at things in the cold light of day and that, you know, but you want the game to be about players. And I think VAR's uh, actually made it, so, in some respects, harder for referees to, to referee because every decision's, you know, dissected. Yeah, because obviously, with telly and that I imagine before it became hot because you got re- a back when it started obviously you'd get replays and that and it gets watched but it used to kind of be it maybe got spoken about a match of the day quickly and that was it but now as soon as it happens everyone and it's is it a penalty is it not it puts pressure and you can understand it's got to be hard isn't it because you've got that nerves you can't just naturally referee a game anymore and sometimes you're having they're having the ref because of our and giving decisions when they wouldn't because they think oh if it's clearly not they might overturn it and then People in VAR ain't doing their job. It's just a big mess, really, to be honest. I agree with Linda. It's not, um, I know she didn't say the word, but I think our problem in, in our league is just the incompetence of the people in charge of it. There's no bias either way. I've watched games, a lot of different teams or whatever, and the refereeing gets no better in any game I watch. No, no. Well, I think we've all seen decisions this year that baffled us with VAR anyway. We'll let them worry about that. We'll worry about myself, getting my players on the pitch and winning the game, Linda. We'll not try and put the excuses out before the game starts either. No, and it's no Clement style either. Um, you know, even even with the decision to uh, to rule out Scott Wright's goal, he, he just said that's what VAR's for and he accepts the decision. He's not really ever complained about any sort of referee in the performances. Um no, I just, I just hope we, we, we are really up for this game in Sunday Oaks. You know, take a, a win by any means, but I would love us just to be on the front foot and have a real go, because um, yeah, we've conceded some poor goals this year, but so have they, and I, I would just love us to actually even score first for a change against the Ox and and really put them under the cosh. I, I mean, we should have won the game the first game at Ibrox. We blew it. You know, we had opportunities. We had a lot of the ball in the second half. Yeah, they could have scored the breakaway, but, you know, we huffed and puffed and they were there for the taking. And the game at Parkhead, well, we looked as if we shot myself in the foot. We lost a man and then we get the goal for James Tavenier. Well, there was only one team finishing, Jayen, wasn't there? Finished really strongly, didn't we? And again, just ran out of time. Tab pops up with a chance and... Um... I remember. I think it. I think we had a chance to make a chance. Dow sort of oh, yeah, shot he's... when he's, he'd, he'd been. He'd had two or three games. He was doing all right, but Tavernier was where Tavernier was, weren't he? And it was almost written for that ball to go across sort of the six-yard box. But no, like um, Linda says, we've we've not scored at the right times. We've not taken our chances when we played against them. We've gone behind and always been playing catch up. It'd be nice to sort of, you know, start quick. I start quick for the change. And see how see how they react going to behind and us if we can get the crowd on side and we're not chasing. I think you're right. The game at Ibrox at the start of the season, although we had our chances, it was an underwhelming performance against a weak team of us, and nice. we never really got the crowd. We didn't really the crowd were never on side because I think of the the tactics on the display. Should we say? Oh, that I think that was the day that Michael Veal was the fans completely. That was a that was the beginning and the end. If I'm honest, that day, Linda. Yeah, yeah. As uh, JM said, it was the manner in, in, in which we played and I don't know, the set up, just everything about it. And yeah, we had our chances. That That's the ironic thing in that game. You know, we still could have won it despite the fact that we didn't play very well at all. But the start of the season wasn't very good and we were all worried about just his tactics and his team formations and his selections and yeah, I think that was it, Ox. The writing was on the wall. And even if we had got a draw or even managed to scrape a win, I don't even know if things would have improved under Beal after that. 
Um, and as you said there, we certainly shot ourselves in the foot in the in the game at New Year. But again, unlucky not even come out. We just had drawn that game. Um, I'm really quite feeling quite confident about Sunday. Not overconfident, Ox, but we'll never have a better opportunity. No. No, as we're moving towards the tune, come and join us. 0141-356-1972. Gives your thoughts, um, uh, your hopes for the weekend. Gives your thoughts on maybe the referee, if you want to go down that road. Or gives your thoughts, we asked you, would you play Sterling? And if you would play him, where would you play him? Uh, A lot of debate about that. Um, People have seen it differently, which is good. I think it's, it's good that people see it differently, Linda. Yeah, definitely, Ox, and it means that we've got options as well. Um, I don't know if you've got any concerns about Sterling's temperament, and, and he does he does tend to pick up bookings as well, and I'm not saying he's got a problem with that. Um, anybody can get booked, particularly in an old firm game. Um, I don't know. I, as I say, um, he, I, I, well, even if he doesn't start the game on Sunday, he might have a part to play. Um, but I can also see what Jai am saying about having him in the middle of the park. You know, he's he's a bit he's a unit, um, he can get up and down the park quite easily, and they might fear him. Um, but it's a it's a headache for the manager, but a nice headache to have for a change, maybe. Hi. So if people might come in, give us their thoughts. Are you hoping that Red Bands fit Jai am? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Not nothing. I don't embarrass it. She's not had an opportunity to get sharp, but more because of how well Rivan's performed, to be honest. Ever since he's had a bit of a mainstay, he's definitely kicked on and you can see the more he's got confident, the better he's got. And to be honest, it's not so much about against Barisic, it's just more the fact that I feel like we're missing a really good player at the moment if Rivan's not in the team. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how Red fans come in and we, we doubted them and we hemmed him hard and, and all of a sudden he's the first choice lander, isn't he? For yeah. the fans, if you like. Yeah, and I think the manager said that it had been his most and uh, consistent spell under Clement. He'd started to see what he was hoping to see with, with young Ridvan. Um and I think he was really enjoying himself as well. The young guy, he, he'd started, um, you know, he'd really get in into the team, and um, you could see he's got a really good relationship with his teammates now. And when he was in and out the team before Ox and he had that long spell out injured, I don't think he really felt he felt part of it. Just typical for us, he goes away and a meaningless, friendly again, you know, these injuries. Um, but hopefully it was just, um, you know, a, a minor thing and I would love to see him start in Sunday, Ox. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I think most people would... Most people would like Red Van. Um, he's grown on us. <laughs> no pun intended, Giant. <laughs> Wish he would grow on us a little bit, but no, yeah, he's there. No, hundred percent. He he looked like he definitely looked like a boy at the start of the season, but maybe not getting the opportunities. But you can now see what, to be honest, got it. Whoever signed him, you can see what people saw in him signing him. Now the boy's got energy. He's really tidy. He's actually not scared. He doesn't mind a tackle. And let's be honest, if if we can't realise tactically that a boy at his height, they might target him in the air. It's up to us to deal with that, isn't it, as a team? That's an obvious target. That's a weakness, but you've got to deal I'll, with that. I'll, I'll say this. He'll win more heads of Barisic. He'll win. Yeah, it helps if you jump for the ball, doesn't it? Uh, just, I mean, Bonner's been a good player for us. You know, he's had his, he's had his bomb scare moments. He's had his bad games, but we're the piece. He's done OK for us. But it's time. You've got to move on. You've got to keep progressing then. Right, and some of the, the flaws that uh, Bonner's got in his game and some of the pluses he's got in his game, Bonner, Red fans no go. But the the negatives are that Red, uh, Bonner's not good in the air and Bonner doesn't go up for a tackle. Uh, he's not up for a tackle. Well, Red Van is up for a tackle and for his size, he'll compete in there. Yep, definitely, Ox, and I think, um, you know, things like, like uh, his ability to cross the ball, young Ridvan, I think you can see that he's that's been steadily improving as well. Um, we're going to need, we are going to need everybody to be up for the challenge. I don't know, we born that, he seems, as you say, he seems to have these bomb scare moments. Um, I can't, I, I know he's had a bit of a nightmare sometimes, well, most of the times at Parkhead since he's been here. 
Um, apart from the game we won 2-1, uh, he, he set up uh, Kent for that brilliant goal. I thought he had, a brill- he had a really good game that time at Parkhead, but he does tend to have these moments where you don't know what Bourne is going to turn up. However, if he, if he does start on Sunday, let's hope that he's thinking this could be my last Old Firm game at Ibrox. I'm going to be leaving soon and he's really up and up for the game and puts in a, a great performance. And, and the, if the fans will get right behind him on Sunday and um, support him as much as he needs. Um, and if he does play, then, you know, you never know. Cause maybe he'll be the one that will set up Dessers for the first goal in his hat-trick. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> you never know. You never know, Linda. You never know. But is that me and you going to get drugs tested? <laughs> <laughs> we better stop, stop those magic mushrooms. <laughs> oh, I don't know what you're talking about, Linda. No, oh, they are. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, right. Aye, right, we'll be interested. Uh, is that the big debate then? Who's going to put it left back and who's going to put it? Is that the two big debates, Jim? Who's going to play wide right and who's going to play left back? Is that it? Everybody else, home and host, in the team? Uh, well, no, well, I don't think I don't think the left backs are debate if they're both fit. I think that's a case of who's available. I don't think it, I don't think you'll get many debating that now. To be honest, I think Rip Vans is the number one left back just through form and whatever. Um, and then you've got that combination of right midfield and does that mean Sterling? I think if you like the three, who's going to play at left back? Is Sterling going to play? And then does that mean who's playing where? Right midfield or the centre? Because we've got that debate, haven't we? If Sterling plays, does he go on the right or does he go in the engine room? <laughs> Sorry, I just did a text from Big Stevie. He says, can you make the PayPal simple? I can't do it. We'll come to that in a minute. We'll come to that in a minute. We'll get some instructions to help people. I, I suppose there's sort of three debates because of the fitness, if you play Sterling in midfield, do, do you play Diamondi? But do you play Cantwell on the right, or do you do you leave it and uh, drop Diamondi? If you if you play Sterling at left back, or do you play Midvan at left back, or do you play Borna? And then they they are the three positions. I think the rest of them it will be uh, Tavernier, Golson, Suter, uh, Lundstrom, Dessers, uh, and I think Silver will start. And then I think Canmel will play in the number ten role after Saturday. And then the rest the, the only leaves three positions might be up for up for debate, but that's only the, the manager might see it completely different one, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right, Ox. It's it's up for debate because of, of you as you say, the fitness questions around um, you know, some of the players and their ability to start a game or do they come on because of the fact that they're coming back from injuries. I agree with you. Cantwell, if Cantwell plays, he has to play number 10. Um, I don't think it's worked when he's went out onto the right-hand side. And I know he's got, he should be able to play more than one position. He's talked about that recently, but he's more effective if he's playing number 10. And if he chooses not to start him and he put, plays Lawrence in there, then Cantwell will probably come on at some point. Silva, um, I just I, I don't know what you thought about him on Saturday. He did some good things, but you're still looking for him to maybe influence the game a wee bit more. Um, when Matondo came on, that was a brilliant goal he scored, and we're maybe looking for Silva to do something like that in a game as well, Ox, aren't we? Um, but Dessers, I think, will start as well. There's been a bit of debate or, or discussion about Kamar Roof recently, and you know whether you know is there any chance that he would start? But I don't think so. Kamar Roof is still only going to play cameo roles, I would imagine, going forward. Try it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see Ruth, are we? Let's be honest, have we heard we're going to see him? No. No, I don't think so, J.M., no. I don't, I don't think... I mean, I think the manager said he, he picked a team in the bench to, uh, to get the puzzle right for who can play minutes in that. And Kima, Seema went past him. So Seema's ahead of him the way the manager sees it at the moment. You know, but nothing really surprising football, mate. 
No, not if he can get back or if he's being rested to keep things away or if he just felt that he wanted to get Seymour a few minutes and let him know he was ready for the bench. You never know, do you? You never know. But, um, yeah, on that, so um, I know Linda was saying about obviously Silva and what have you about, would, um, would anybody want to start Matondo on the left? No, I'm, I'm Matondo coming off the bench, James. Uh, Jay, um... Yeah, well, no, no impact impact player that makes that, it, 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 it makes sense, but um, I just don't know if it's a bit like the um, you know you put you play silver there for a game or so you get a job. He had a great game away from home at um, Benfica, didn't he? Maybe a bit pumped to people thought, or maybe we filled filled an issue there. Came on, um, came on against Motherwell, wasn't it? Sorry, and done okay there. Done a little bit of an impact. Obviously, we never got the result, but I just thought he looked lost there on. But he looked a little lost there at the weekend. Uh, I think it, but what happened for me was I thought his decision making was poor. When he got when he done something nice, he then tried to do too much, or he didn't let it go at the right time. Can I just let everybody know what you don't have to have a PayPal account um, to have a go on the the Rangers Radio uh, raffle? Um, let me just get this right. Shop dot Rangers Radio dot online. You go in there, just use your normal uh, card. Uh, you don't need a PayPal account, so just feel free to have a go for the raffle. You want a, a ticket for the big game on Sunday? Kindly donated we go bathrooms. It's easy, Linda, isn't it? It's easy. Yeah, very easy. It's very easy. Yeah, yeah. So just just go in, use your card, fill it out, pick your number, and off we go. Oh, right, everybody must be watching the football. Um, we need to get you in. Come on, we need callers. This is a phone-in show to make it work, Jay, a minute. 100%. People don't want to be listening to us the whole time, do they? No, I don't, I don't know. I don't, no, nah, they don't, Linda. <laughs> no, they, they, they don't, Ox, for sure. That's just that questions spark debate and different people see things so differently. It's, it's frightening how people can watch a game of football. And, um, my good friend, Southside, we, we talk often and we, how we see things so differently, you know, uh, watching the same game, you know, it's, it's amazing. But can I bring up my one of my biggest concerns going into the weekend? And he says how people see it differently. The, the price of vodka? Possibly, yeah, possibly. That, that's going to do, that, do stuff as well. Set okay. pieces. Corner kicks, oh, we never Cor- in the past night. Oh, dear. Listen, we're coming near the tune. I think that one will... Or rumble on Linda for after the tune, but it's a good point he makes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I don't know what the statistics are in terms of um, our ability to even create a, a score or create a, a, an actual chance from from the set pieces. But um, he did say that they've been working on the mock, so who knows? Maybe there'll be there'll be something up their sleeve. And I'm, I'm so, I haven't obviously been on since the Benfica, and whatever this is about, no one on the halfway line as well. <laughs> I've just, yeah, I've got, I've got a serious. There's a, if there's one chink in my club on our armour is coming, it's set pieces. Yeah, the, the out swinging corners, and then that um, against it was as if we were two 0 down and desperate for a goal. You know, and we were trying to force the game. You know, we did, we were near, honey. Yeah. But anyway, what's what's gone is gone. But I, I, I personally don't like the swinging corner. You get it wrong, the ball's away for the other team's goal. I get it. If you get it wrong with an ink swinger, you might put it for a goal kick. But if you get it right, there's a lot more panic, in my opinion, Linda. Yeah. And it's also as well that you don't seem to take a short corner or, you know, just mix it up, just do something different. Um, you know, try and find maybe somebody for a layoff, or it was it's it's quite extraordinary, Ox, that there there is no variation in the corners whatsoever. I agree with you about the outswinger; they're, they're slightly more dangerous. But as JM says, that oh that could be countered if you if you make sure that you've at least got maybe one or two back. Um, I the Benfica one was baffling, Ox. We weren't they chasing the game or or anything at that point. It was very strange. No, they've only leaving a lot of players up, but you need one. If if they've got one 40 yards for the box, traditionally you'd have one on him and one gain yourself about 10, maybe standing at the halfway line. That's how you would set up normally, Jay Emma. But we didn't, it was me. Yeah, 100%. And also, not only 
you get say you're trying something, say you're trying a little move or something, you're trying to catch them out with the first one, you get away with it. But with all the people that are in the stands and whatever, all these coaches and just any normal manager, you're only getting away with that month once before someone says, let's keep someone up here, you know, let's take a gamble and we'll get in. You'll get away with something once and that's it. And the fact that we kept doing it was quite frightening. It's like as if, 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 if all your players were on the park and the Matondo's playing, you wouldn't bring him back for a corner, would you? You just tell him to stone at the halfway line. Yeah? Yeah. Well, opinion. that's what was getting me. We did, we were leaving nobody back defensively, but when we defend corners, we bring everyone back. Work that out. Aye. I don't get it. Right. Get yourself a mute. We're going to have a tune. Took a trip to Ibrahim, my favorite team for to cheer, where they were playing the Glasgow Celtic on the first day of the year. Now the ground was filled to capacity as the teams come out to play. The animals sang the soldiers' song. And the people sang Dolly Gray. Now half time it came and went and the Glasgow Celtic were in the lead. Finny and Tully was drowning everywhere, shaking his rosary beads. While the green flags, they were flying high. Celtic hearts were full of pride. The second half sure it started and the Rangers they turned the tide. Won't you play up the Glasgow Rangers? Oh, play up the boys in blue. Oh, play up the Glasgow Rangers. We're here to cheer for you. Now the ball goes out to water. And from 30 yards he did score Sure you couldn't hear your ears at Ibrox Park For the sash my father wore All oh, play up the Glasgow Rangers Sammy Cox is on the ball He slips it through the Willie Wood Bar then on for to Ian McCall McCall to Billy Simpson Oh, here come the boys in blue Well, Simpson beats the Celtic center half And then goes number two Now the Rangers fans are roaring Jardy Young, he takes a free Unto the head of William Simpson And then goes number three While it's three one for the Rangers That was the final score A happy new year from my Brock's Park For Rangers beat the Celtic once more Yes, a happy new year from my Brock Park for Rangers with the Celtic once more. Yes, a happy new year from. You give us a call on 0141 356 1972. It's your show, it's your platform. Let's hear from you. Yeah, we're all back. Yep. Yep. Yeah, come and join us. 01413561972. For those listening, walk you through. Uh, we've got a ticket. Uh, we've been kind of going to be go bathrooms for Sunday. What we've decided today's raffle. Uh, Ten pound a shot, and we'll see where it goes. All all the proceeds are going to the Emmy Smiley 
charity foundation which does a lot of good work. Uh, particularly on a bit of ca- cancer uh, there, uh, which is close to everybody, every family. So, uh, if you go to, let me just get this right, uh, shop.rangersradio.online, you choose an option, which is your number, which is your ticket, and then you take, you can have up to four shots if you wish. Yeah, you add to your cart, which is, yeah, and then you just put your details in. Couldn't be any simpler. Linda? Yeah, absolutely, Ox. And if people can afford to go on and, and have a try, you know, somebody's got to win it. And what a terrific present that would be, even for a member of your family or to be able to go to the big game on Sunday. Yes, yes. And thanks very much to my friends at Go Bathrooms, Chayama. Absolutely. Thank you very, very much. Uh, great opportunity, like Linda says. Somebody maybe doesn't always get to go to the game. Ten pound a ticket, gotta be in it to win it. Yes, yes. And as we're saying, it's no uh, the money's going to a worthy cause as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And if you think about it, if you really think about it, you may get a ticket for a big game for a tenner, Jim. Yeah, he's getting it cheaper than me. That's for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you might get it. How good's the seat? <laughs> yeah, it'd be um, no, it'd be it was exactly that. You're not gonna, you know, tickets are expensive. Not always gonna get a chance to go. You might go and see probably the biggest league game in a long time at Ibrox for a tenner. Yeah, that's a good point, you mate. Um, because of the way the leagues have went in the last few years, Linda. You know, there's been games where we could have made a difference. You know. Even going back to when Murray was a, the manager, if we'd won the game, could have put a bit of pressure on him, but we were never closer. Or those he's in front, potentially, with a game in hand. Uh, it's never been like this for a long time. You maybe go back, you have to go back to 2011, um, 12 season, yeah. And yeah. Uh, um, because of the way the leagues have panned out, so this is arguably, arguably one of the biggest. All for them games in a long, long time. Yeah, I think you're right, Alex. I think um, in the year we got to the Europa League final, so we were looking at season 21 22 when we, when we played yeah. them when, in Aaron. Ramsey scored. Yeah, so am I right in saying that with that game, were we maybe three or four points behind, maybe three points behind? And when they won, obviously, that, that doubled their lead. But with that, if we'd won that game, it would have made that a lot closer. I think I'd, I'd have to look at it, but I'm sure it was quite tight if we had won the game. And he scored, and was that the, was that the first five minutes of the game or something? Aye, Aye. I remember flying. Yeah, was the Alan, Alan McGregor's finest game, was it? No, no. And we lost 2-1, and that basically near enough killed that off. And that game, I remember, as I say, when we got the early goals, you see, we're flying. We had a couple of chances to, to get the second and third goal. Again, we didn't take them. Um, and there has been a couple of times, when you think about last year, even at the New Year game, Ibrox and we gave away the silly goal, the opening goal, when we had a scored and we ended up drawing that game. Whereas if we had won that game, it would have made it a bit more interesting. However, you're right in terms of how close it is. I mean, let's face it, Ox, we, if we had played the Dundee game and won, we, we would be going into the game two points ahead and we've not We've not been in that position for, for a number of years, um, apart from 55 when we won out of the park, basically. Um, yeah, ve- very much so. This is this is the first big game like this for, for a long time. J.M. Yeah, 100%. It's rare we get to... Well, ever since I've got the season tickets in Gerard and then... Um, that we've been to this old firm game of the season, whereas if we've not got the result, we're out of it. Whatever happens, whatever result, either way this game goes, this title not finished. And that's rare. But don't get me wrong, it could put us in a serious front running position if we do go and get three points and then back it up and then back it up midweek. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. No, I don't. People could argue it's a bigger game for them and it is for us. Obviously, if we win the next two games, we're five points clear. Yeah, that, that's fact. 
Yeah. Yeah, and we've and, and unfortunately we've been in this chasing position a lot where it's a almost you can't afford to lose game because it would put us in pole position. And yeah, you'd agree the pressure would be on them to go and get a result, definitely not to lose the game, to stay in touch. And if we were to, you know, because you quick, as we know in this run, and especially in recent years, you quickly start to run out of games. Yeah, yeah, well, obviously, in the next, the next week or so, Linda, there'll only be five games left. Yeah, New Yorks. I mean, you don't want to get too ahead of yourself, but if you even just like talk about the next three games, if if you go and win those three games, you're in an unbelievable position. You know, who would have thought when, when Clermont came in, I know we've talk, talked about this before, that we would even have thought going into the April Old Firm game that we potentially would have been two points ahead of them. I mean, it would have been absolute dreamland. People would have just thought, no way. So as I said earlier, what the manager's done has been quite remarkable. And he's had a successful season so far anyway, but we do want to, to try and get over the line with the other two trophies. But as you said, Docs, these next three games that we've got up to the split, if you go and get three victories, you're in an unbelievable position. Just go to say, I've just been sent a text from our northwest to the city correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he did say that there's a bonus if you win the ticket. You know, not only will you get a ticket for the match, you'll get the privilege of meeting Big Stevie for the drum. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, sometimes in life there's win wins, JM, and sometimes there's a winner and a loser. <laughs> yes, yes. Some people ask asking for their money, but you have to pay them a tenner to pick it up. And the yeah. setting price is you get to meet Southside. <laughs> 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 yeah. The two they will kill me. Yeah, don't ask Southside for his bet builder before the game. He's not of the best season. I mean, he, he did get one up right at the start, so I think that get, keeps him in the plus for the season. But just, <laughs> just, I mean, he, 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 he might be up, but he's statistically, and he's having a run for your money. He's atrocious. Oh, oh he keeps going. And one of these days, if he gets another one up, between now and the end of the season, he's well up for the season. Well, it was an exciting lunchtime kickoff game, wasn't it? He was dead and buried. He should have went, went all in for a single, should he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it keeps his own more toes, Linda. It's entertaining, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I think he should try and just pick them out of hat, but he might have already done that. <laughs> I think he's tried it all. I think he's in the, the cute not my dartboard. He's tried everything. You know, but anyway, yeah, that's another subject. I'll mention it to him more. Right, pass on your regards, JM and the bet builder. Jesus, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some donations I've made this year. <laughs> I me, I must. I'm every. I've only missed it once. Like, once the whole time he's done it, and I've cashed out a few times last season. So I was, I'm well up with the Super <laughs> Six, right? But the time it started this year, I was away. Oh, that's, no. <laughs> that's just your Donald Day, Ox. That's awful. Anyway, come and join us. It's a phone in show. Uh, we need you to phone in if we're going to continue for tours. Uh, it's 0141 356 1972. Come in and give your thoughts. Uh, we've talked about the left back position, central mid, old position, wide right position. Give your thoughts as we start and keep building up. To a massive game for your club on Sunday. Ciao, yeah. Yep, want to hear who everybody would start. And we're, we're thinking it's only a few positions. People might have other ideas. Are people happy with the back four? You know, everyone's got their own ideas, haven't they? It's definitely plenty of spaces up to grabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what he picks out, what he goes with, you know. Uh, I was really pleased to see Big Sima back. I wonder if he could have uh, he he could be the hero. This is the time for heroes, Linda, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, Ox. And um, he's dead brilliant to come back, Sima. You know, there wasn't any complications in terms of his time frame for his recovery. He's he's done really well considering he needed surgery as well. Um, he was absolutely flying. Was that fifteen goals? I think he had and. Um, he stepped, I think he did something like 33 appearances, I think I saw today. 
So he was um, he was definitely like top, you know, on his, the top of his game. But he's back now, and he could have a big part to play. I just, as, as we said earlier, there he's not Clement's not the sort of person that will, although you're on the bench, it's to play some part in the game. He's not really likely to throw any of them in to start a game. I don't think. Who knows? Maybe he'll throw a curveball. Um, but I don't. I, I see this. I don't think he will. Ox. So I think he'll just go with. Starting the team with the players that um, that that can't just play like maybe fifteen twenty half an hour, but a uh, big seamer. Who, who knows? Maybe he'll be the one that will come on and score the winner. Um, it would be really good, Ox, if we could just get a couple of goals ahead. I know I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, so to speak. But if we could just put the pressure on and get a couple of goals. Really do to them what they've kind of done to us a couple of times over the years at Park Edox. Um, Keep you know. going. Keep going. Drag them. Yeah, get the yeah. first yeah. goal. Well, you get the second goal. And then their game, was, the next goal was massive because even when we lost the game at uh, their place, JM, you seen it. When we get that goal and it went 2-1, we were doing the 10 men, but all the momentum was with us. If we were tuning them up and you get the third goal, that psychologically, that just sucks energy in any game of football with. Yeah, you know you're suddenly not in it, are you? You know you get another one, you're still miles, you're still looking for that next one again. It becomes it becomes worse. But when you when there's two, you've always got a chance. You nip one, you got a chance to get an equaliser. But yeah, I mean, I'll take a bridge man right now to be fair. But like you say, start quick and let's t- let's take the game away from them a little bit. Let let's hope to let's try and play on the front foot. That's what I want to say. I don't I don't remember the last time we did it and did it right. Start against them, started on the front foot, and you know, and was a better team for ninety minutes. Uh, maybe the game that Linda mentioned when Ramsey scored. We should have put the game out of sight. They scored for the first time they were part, and then Alan threw one in. Um, yeah, they did, did. Yeah, they did, didn't they? They got that that ridiculous that ridiculous free kick from about fifty yards out, and somehow it ended up in the yeah, net. Yeah, that made it two one. But they scored for the first time up apart. We dominated the game. We should have should have, should have been two or three nil. No, no, you know. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. 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 I've just got to read this out. Um, go to shop.rangersradio.online for anybody who wants a, a shot at uh, the raffle. Uh, the Emily Smiley link. Choose your number. Add to the cart. Yeah. Maximum up to four numbers. Yeah. Once you've chosen, scroll up and click view cart. Just like you would do in a basket in a shop. Simple wonder, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's very yeah, straightforward. Cart, check the numbers are correct and click proceed to check out. Just the same as you do in a shop, Chayama. Yeah. Fill in your contact details so we can get a hold of you if you win the prize. That's not a lot to ask, is it? Yeah. That's important. That's yeah. important. Fill in your contact details. Press the proceed to PayPal. If you've got a PayPal account, click and pay with PayPal. If you haven't got a PayPal account, click and pay with debit or credit card. All, all payments are secured. By PayPal, so nobody gets your details. You know, yeah. I wonder if you just want to send me the three numbers in the back of your card, I'll sort that out for you. Yeah, no, no worries, Ox, on its way. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can do right, your Christmas well, shop, million. <laughs> we'll run through that again. It's just like any other uh, uh, shop, Jayama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got mine booked in, so if everybody's struggling, just don't bother. It's all right. Don't worry. You can be the winner, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry about that. If you're struggling, I'll, I'll go in a raffle for one and take the ticket. Not a problem. But no, it's good. It's simple. It's simple and easy. Get on it. If you're having any problems, just ring Fox. Yes. Do you think we should get his personal number online so everybody can just phone him? Um, well, it is for charity. I'd recommend <laughs> it. No, I think I should. Right, here we go. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, we digress again, but I that, that hopefully for people that are listening helps it and makes it easier for them. Uh, things are moving in the old raffle front. Uh, good, good. You've got to be in it, you Right, uh, I I think that was a good point you made, Linda and Jay. picked up that the last time we were on the front foot against them, you might have to go back to that game. Yeah, we, we Gio was a manager, we were on the road to Seville and maybe we took my focus after the league title, bizarrely. Uh, we played them, obviously we played them about three times quite rapid, 
that game, the semi-final game, and we went to their game after the split. Um, I think that Peter do a draw, didn't it? Yeah. If I yeah. remember the says me right. So Carla scored in that game, didn't he? Was that one oh, each? Yes. I remember that game very well. Obviously, carla has got a lot of answer for Giant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 absolutely. But, um, yeah, that was another one. I think that was a real... It was a weird thing around the Scottish League at that time because if all that was happening, no one was really bothered. Even they were sick at the time, weren't they? The, all the focus was on us and how well we were doing and what we were doing for Scottish football, which is, it was strange because I know we felt like we could have won the league that time because we were a good side. And especially you think after in that run as well, where we played that semi final match and then, um, sorry, the Europa League game went to extra time and then played the semi final and looked fitter than them. It was obviously the best team in Scotland was that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Aye, we were we were the best team. It was only fixtures. And remember, remember, if they're talking about what's happened with Scottish football, remember we played games against uh, teams, and then and then they moved fixtures, changed the setup, uh, cancelled fixtures so that teams could bring in new players, so they so they yeah. could play at a different time. We know what they've done, Linda. Yeah, there they was know- a. You don't want to belittle anything, but there was an alleged um, other uh, break, wasn't there? And everything was closed down, so-called, apparently. But a certain game was played on the Sunday um, and the crowds were allowed in and then shut everything down. As you say, somebody came out and admitted happily, happy for that to happen because I'm able to go out and buy some new players. And we were going to be going to Pataudry and Parkhead, absolutely flying. Neither of those games get played. And when we came back after that break, we just didn't hit the ground running. And that's been a common theme for us over the years. That's why it was so good. When we came back after the winter break this year, we Clermont, we went on that 10 game straight wins that kept us in that. It's kept us in the title. And when you think about it, Ox, if we were two points ahead just now, it's a 10 point swing. Quite, quite unbelievable. Aye, uh, remarkable, JM. Really, what Clement's done, eh? Yeah, you just wanted to be just in the back of my wanted to be competitive, and if it was still within half a touching distance by this point, I think we all would have been happy, wouldn't we? The players looked that far behind the the team, but the fans were down. I, I, I saw, I did see it as a write off, maybe a bit like we could have nicked a couple too, but didn't think we'd be where we were now going into Sunday. Hundred percent, the Clement's done some job. If Clement had goes back to where Roger, Rogers is this now, we'd have still seen he's done some job, eh? Because yeah. I, I don't think you were alone and think it was a right off. I, I think the only guy was pretty confident, but he said that if we could go in the run, South Side kept beating that drum. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, he did, there, there were people I didn't know if it was hope. They, they were spot on. I just thought, I thought it was absolutely done. Like you say, I would have, I would have bitten your hand off for being even with the game in hand, with being two points behind, behind, uh, behind sorry, what what is the situation again? But when they get, they're a game in front, aren't they? And ahead of us. They're a, they're a, point, they're a point they're in front. A and we've point got. in front and a, and a game in front, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, a point in front, I'll get a point in front and a game in front and you would have taken that or you would have been taken being slightly further away knowing if we won this game on Sunday, we had half a chance. And we've now got more than that. We went on Sunday. We're in the driving seat. Yeah. Let's hear from you. Why don't you give us a call on 0141 356 1972. It's your show. It's your platform. Let's hear from you. Yes, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Uh, oh, no, we... As the week goes on. As the week goes on. Oh, did I hear Mr. Fox join us here? No. No, we did not. No, I thought I heard these dulcet tones, JM. Sure, I'm sure I heard him kicking around in the background. At least I never saw it. I'm sure I heard them. Did you, Linda? I thought I heard a, a, a little voice popping in to give us his views. 
I'm certainly, I'm certainly did. Was that you, Mr. Fox? So oh, he's away again. <laughs> Is he feeling confident about Sunday? But me and Sunday are us winning. <laughs> us, us winning. <laughs> oh, he's always confident. He's always That's confident. Good. Suppose it depends on many us on Saturday. Right. <laughs> you know, but uh, Aye, come and join us. Come on. Big week for the club. Uh, give us your thoughts, your hopes. Your team as we build up. You know, everybody's going to see it slightly different. I'm sure the lads are more will see it different for us. Again, you know, it's, that's that's the thing. Everybody how how, how they see the game. I just hope it's a big game. I hope it's a better game than the, one of the, the shootouts uh, in down in England on Sunday afternoon, China. <laughs> I've never, oh, it's rare I fall asleep. All of a sudden, that was bad. That wasn't. That wasn't good. But to be fair, the, the thing is about the media. I think their media was saying it as a a chess match between two geniuses. At least Scotland would have just called that what it was. Absolutely terrible. They build up everything. That that was a shocking game of football to watch, wasn't it? Hardly a shot on goal. Yeah, I know, I know. Listen, that's, that, we just need to take our chances, Linda. We will make chances, but we need to take them. If you think mm-hmm. back to the first, that game at Parkhead, even before they scored, we had chances, yeah? Yeah. I think that's probably one of the concerns um, that we've maybe still got as a fan base, Ox, is that in the old firm fixtures over the last few years, there's been times where we've hadn't taken the chances. Um, you know, and or maybe or maybe looking at somebody like, you know, Cyril Dessers and, you know, it's not a case of overly criticising him, but he scored a wee against Betis. But we're looking for him to step up in a big game and you won't get a bigger game than Sunday. And um, I don't really care who scores and the manager doesn't care either. But when you've got, when you're playing centre forward, the chances are that something might fall to you. Um, in the box and in this game we might only get maybe maybe two or three and, and hopefully you know he can he can stick one away. Um I'd love it if he gets more than that. Um I might be totally wrong. I don't see the game being a nil nil at like the big game on Sunday. I, I I think that there there's going to be goals ox and um I don't know, do you see do you think that they're gonna to have to at least score two to win? I don't actually. I don't. No. Uh, I think the uh, pressure can do things. I mean, obviously they've scored goals, but I mean, uh, I think we've shown that we can keep them quiet. But uh, this manager's uh, Philip. It's whether he's got the. He's. You just need a. You need a bit of luck in these games, Linda. The, the, yeah. But um, uh, we've got Super Jack and goal. Hopefully he's a quiet day, and, and when called upon. He's shown that he can he can do well in the big moments, Jay. Yeah, man. Yeah, you don't want him to be busy, but hopefully he just sort of continues that form that he's shown at the times and made some great saves. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting, hasn't it? Because even though they've nicked goals and that, I don't. There's not been a time this season where our backs have been against the wall against them. Really, a little spell maybe away at their place, but it's the timers of the goals. That one, that one over New Year, their second goal just after half time killed us, didn't it? It's the timing of goals and not getting in. And like you say, they took their moments. We've been guilty of not taking our moments. So hopefully it's our turn to take a couple of chances and maybe just stun them and hit them on the back foot for a change. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, I mean, that, I mean they scored one just before half-time and one just after half-time in the two matches this season. You know, uh, and it took us, obviously, we then lost a man, you know, and then we reacted excellently. Wonder the last time we played. After the two setbacks, yeah, Ox, um, and the fans, we, we, you know, the, the crowd is going to be absolutely up for this on Sunday. As we've t- already touched on, it's the first time for a while we've really been so close, um, and the the atmosphere is is. I mean, it's going to be the last time that there isn't going to be any away fans, um, not this season. Um, what I mean is, at Ibrox going forward, there will be. 
uh, the old firm, uh, there'll be Celtic fans in next year. Um, when you think about that atmosphere, when the players walk out, you know, obviously we've had the European home games that the new guys have experienced, but Sunday's going to be something else. And, um, you know, if that doesn't inspire you to go out and, you know, they will give 100%, 110%, we know they will. But can you imagine if, as, as you say, if we get an early goal and we maybe get another one, the, the atmosphere is going to be unbelievable. They won't have experienced anything like it, the, the, the players that will be playing at Ibrox for the first time in an old firm game. It'll, be, it'll make the, 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 the hairs in the back of their neck stand up. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how people react. You know, um, you, you want your big players to turn up. You want all your players to turn up, Jaya. Yeah, there's different ways of turning up as yeah. well. There's uh, not getting it. You know, certain players you don't. Well, maybe younger. We've talked about the Amande. Maybe not getting overwhelmed. Um, been spoken about enough. He hasn't shown it in a while. But maybe certain players like Todd not getting overexcited and playing to it. You just want everyone. Let the atmosphere motivate you, but also make sure you play you play a game as well. There's been bigger and better players being caught up in the atmosphere in these games, and it just takes a rash tackle or a bit of madness, and it can it can turn the game very quickly. That's an interesting one. You you, you talk about Todd Cantwell. Uh, I didn't think he had a great game in the last game we played them. Um, and then I don't think anybody played particularly with the tactics in the first game at Ibrox. Even though we dominated the ball in the second half, but we just we were so negative. Todd Cantwell, he, he's a maverick wonder. Yeah. And that cross he put in, in Saturday was, was excellent. Uh, but he has to play with the head as well as the heart in these games as well, yeah. It's it's controlled passion and controlled aggression. That's what I'm kind of alluding to. You know, the atmosphere is going to be there. That that should make you, you know, you'll be enthusiastic. You'll be wanting to do well, but you've got to be controlled. I, I totally get what Jai am saying there. Um, that 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 game at Parkhead, when you think about Cantwell, you know, he was actually through twice. And he, he and he should have he, he probably should have scored. It wasn't as if like he was totally anonymous in the game. He was in the game, but he just didn't do the right things at the right time, Ox. Um, but but no, he he's you know he's played in a few old firm games now. He'll be able to hopefully you know put on a good show, but in a controlled manner. Fancy Todd to get a goal on Sunday. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, Linda. You know he's always running about, isn't he? Yeah. And do you know what, Ox, he's, he, he wants to make things happen. I mean, look at the ball that he put in for Dessers there. He's all in, in Saturday. You know, it's a great wee ball down the wing um, from Tav. He doesn't even need to look up. He just clips the ball in. It's a fantastic cross. That's the sort of thing we want him to do. Um, and he, he likes to make the run beyond. He's already got an old firm game, albeit it was it didn't it, that wasn't a game that, that didn't matter, but it mattered to us. And um, as you say, he just he just keep the head and um, you know show show the good side of his game. Potential match for that, Jay. Hundred percent at any level, Cantwell's a potential match winner, and he's shown it in this game. Like Linda said, although they'll say it, you know, glorify maybe bounce game and that, but they're always important games, and he's shown he can do it. Um, sort of at that turn of Christmas and New Year, he was start, he was contributing with goals, and he continued it. You know, he's he's chipping in more. I think the criticism, the sort of at the back end of Beal and the start of Clement was his numbers. He's shown he can contribute and maybe that's with a bit of clear instruction from the manager and sort of staying in the middle of the pitch. So he's 100% a match winner and if he's if he's on his game, he's going to have a big say. Agree, I wonder. Yeah, I think so. I think he could be the match winner. Um, you know, he, he likes to make things happen. He's a clever footballer as well. Um, as I said earlier, I, I, I know Lawrence is, is is a good player too. He likes a, a shot from outside the box. Can't see the two of them starting locks. As I say, we might be wrong about that as well. But um, but Cantwell probably won't last the full game. And Lawrence could have a part to play if he comes on. 
Um, but I do, I do, I do hope that Cantwell starts, and um, and if we can get him on the ball in the final third, make things happen. Um, don't want him to be coming too deep to take the, the the ball locks and and try and beat the you know do everything he's got to make sure that he uses the players round about him. But I think he's learned from that, and I think um you know Clement is has got the message through to him. I was only one winner there. In that conversation, Jay and Winner, going back a few months. Yeah. Ago. And, and by the way, also, um, and by the way, I know it's easy. Yeah, people say it's your employee and whatever, and you've got it. But by the way, credit to Camp World and Clement for reading the situation because um, after what happened, especially when he got sort of taken off and everything, um, other players can just disappear, can't they? He obviously showed he was up for it. And maybe a testament to the character. I know they're footballers, they get paid a lot of money, why not? But Stranger things have happened that people have just thrown in the towel after. Cause it's embarrassing, isn't it? doesn't matter where it happens. That's embarrassing. They made an example off and he showed well. So fair play to Campwell and hopefully he shows up. I've got a question. Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah, carry on. Obviously, it's an important game on Sunday. I get that for everyone involved, players and that. But how big a game is it for John Suter? Oh, for... Just oh, because he's, it's a massive uh, game because he, if he could have a good game and we we win the game, he's cementing himself in as uh, a Rangers centre half, not just be calling the goals and it could be his shot for a couple of years, Linda. So potentially a massive game because you're judged in these ones, Linda. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big game for Suter, and um, he's kind of made that left side of the defence his own. Um, he's going to be a, and hopefully as I say he, he continues in this uh, vein of form in terms of his fitness ox because we all had concerns for Big John and it was a real shame what happened to him when he first came to Rangers but um, but he's making that that he's making that position his own Who who's to say that going forward he doesn't get the right side of the defence eventually um, you know because Golson's got a bit of competition the, the problem is is that there isn't really any Else, they, they, they can play in the left side just now, and he and probably goals will play continuously anyway. But John Souter, yes, um, you know, they're, they're, there's not really any centre backs that are perfect in, in football when you watch the mocks, and we know that he's had the odd mistake here or there, Souter, but I uh, it's a big game for him. And, um, you know, and him and Golson, I think, are, are certain starters anyway. I don't think there's any debate about that. But um, they just have to be on their toes, Ox, and they have to watch the forwards, the Celtic forwards. We can't deny that, that they, they can they can take their opportunities. And let's hope as well, Ox, it's a game where we don't give any goals away. Make make them, if they're going to score, make them earn it. Mm-hmm. Hi. Is that the point you're making, JM, if he's going to cement his future, as, if you like, in the eyes of the support as a guy? It's going to be there now, next season, when McConnor goes, yeah? Is that what you're thinking? Uh, yeah, 100%. And on that, Linda touched on just the mistakes he's made. Uh, they've sort of been because of maybe the, the Tiber games, but he's not been about maybe he's made a, a complete clangor in one of his games and possibly at the start of the season at fault as well. So he's got a bit of a... He's also scored in this fixture, mind you. But, you know, just maybe for himself mentally to go through a game, have a really good, strong performance, play on that side, be a part of the winning team successful. I think it's... I just think it's an all-round a massive... It's a massive week for everyone, but for Suter just to maybe... It might help himself if he doesn't already to believe that he deserves to be there as well. Yeah, it's a good point you make. It's a good point you make. You know, um, if you have a performance in, in in these games, Linda, you you sort of cement yourself more and more in the eyes of support. I think John, uh, people, I mean, obviously he's playing the right side of the park from. He's been in and showed a good attitude. And he's he's had some good games. He's got a racket in him, and obviously as he gets more experience and 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 gets more confidence, maybe he could go on and. He could submit the jersey for years to come. Yeah, he's, he, he gets you lots of credit in the bank with the support if you can turn up and play well in the in the old firm games. When you think about years gone by, centre half sort of scored important games against Celtic. Uh, you know they've scored winning goals, etc. Richard Goff, even big Lorenzo Amoruso, players like that. Um, as JM said, he's already got a goal against them, so I it, it is an important game for him. 
Um, I think I think with John, um, he you know he loves being at the club. We know his background. You know, I've I've, se- I've seen people online saying he could be a future Rangers captain as well. That that's how high I regard him. Um, he's he's already held in with some Rangers fans, but these are the big the the, the types of games as you say, Ox, that y- you can make your name. Um, but um, I'm ho- hopefully he'll have a good game and let let's hope that that Suter's with us for a few years and and he, he racks up the games because. For the for hit for the injury that he had, he deserves to be playing just now. I'm just gonna look and see how many games he's played this season. I think he might surprise people, Jayam. Yeah. Yeah, obviously there was a little um because um Balogun looked to be a bit Balogun didn't string as many games, I think, as people realised it. I think Suit has sort of been especially since Clemence came in, been hanging around a little bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna look and see. Meh. Just give me one second over here, but I, I get your point. It's a big game for him, you know. Yeah, it's just you know he's he's made a couple of mistakes, and this is a bit. It might be you might be able to see. Is it the most consistent run he's had playing for us? It's got to be up there, hasn't it? I'm if it's the most, game, just... it's got to be as it. So it's just a chance to keep, and if he can make it, to be honest, by default in some aspects. But if it's his place for the run in, and if things go well, suddenly he's there, isn't he? And you know the other players. It's kind of a position that we've not had cemented for a very, very long time, really. Probably oh. since since Bassi's gone, really. And even then, that was for six months. Like <laughs> <laughs> Bassi, yeah. Bassi. Even then, that even then that was by that was by luck. That was by twenty two million pound luck. Wasn't it? But John Sutter has played. Uh, he's been involved in twenty two league games this season. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that'll be twenty nine games in total. This season with five substitute appearances, 34. Obviously, last season he was involved in too many. You know, he only started a total of eight last season, so he had his problems, didn't he? He came back at the end of the season, so he came back with a bad injury. He started more than half the games at the moment, so if he can be involved in the next eight, you know, with some decent numbers under his, his belt this season, Linda, huh? Yeah, and he's managed to play laterally three games in the one week, and that's the sort of player that Clement's talked about having um, to choose from, isn't it? He wants players that are more durable, and uh, they can play in our league, but they can also play in the midweek games when we're playing in the European competition. So yeah, you're right, Ox. That would be over forty games potentially he could have under his belt when it comes to the end of the season. I know John is, uh, you know, he wants to play for Scotland. And that you know, good on him, and he wants to go to the Euros. Um, so as if he continues to play well for us and racks up the games, he, he'll find himself probably at the Euros. I think. I'll be interested to see how that pans out. Yeah, interesting to see him pans out. Yeah, you know, for John, obviously he has to stay fit. Uh, but I think people were really worried about him. But I think if he gets the numbers under his belt, JM. He's put his injuries behind him. You can't predict the future, but he has put them behind him. Man. No, unlike a lot of our players, he look as it did touch wood. It looks like he's because re- people get injured, don't he? But he's recovered and, like you say, put that one to bed and put that behind him. And you can read certain different things by that, but I don't believe, as maybe medical staff and consult, maybe it was proven right long term because he's fit, but. I believe the Times were reports that it was maybe some of our recommendations that maybe put them in that position in the first place. I'll not say too much about it. It wouldn't be right, but I don't think everybody got the everybody got it right at the time, you know, which maybe extended the period of layoff, you know. But you better not get angry with the guy who done it because that would be if you get angry with somebody and then you fall out with them and then it says you hate you, you could get a jail in there. You could, you could, Ox, you could. Um, I would like to see your centre halves. I know this is an understatement and I'm stating the obvious here, but I would like to see your centre half score some more goals for us. Um, I think well, they would. Probably... I'll tell you where we could start with JM's point. Put the the set pieces in better. Yeah. <laughs> I was just watching a video there before the show came on. Big Phil Highlander header at the back post in swinging corner on top. 
But yet again, yet again, only a couple of days before I watched Katic's header, Katic's header, and that was an outswing of Bob Borna. So you're right, maybe just better crosses to start with might be the thing. Aye. On you go, Linda. Yeah, maybe that is the, the problem, Ox. Maybe we are seeing is it the type of corner that maybe it's just the delivery isn't good enough. But there has been times where, for example, Golson's getting on the end of some of the mocks and sometimes he's not the best in that position, but he's not even scored a goal this season. So this would be a good opportunity for Connor to maybe break his duck on Sunday. Yeah, there was a time when you thought Conor Golson scored every week. <laughs> you get two in an old firm game, didn't you, June 55? Aye, aye. It used to pop up, and then all of a sudden it just went, it's went. It's not, even, it's not as if he's been close, JM, is it? No, but we don't, we, 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 I don't know what's gone on since. It, it seems to be a, maybe a hole in the armour, maybe if there's ever an advert for a set piece set to piece coach but we don't look like getting close do we we don't look like we, we, you know we're not threatening headers the balls are to nothing I, I, at the weekend I wasn't even excited when we got a corner I, checked, I just didn't I just didn't see that I don't I don't know what it is like you say we're not even the balls aren't in the right place or the attackers are something's missing something's missing but maybe that will all change at the weekend yeah yeah yeah, yeah, you know, so I, I, your delivery's going to be right and your decision making's going to be right, Linda. What well, I'm saying by that is, what, what, right or left foot, you take it for certain areas, what you're going to do with what you're trying to do with, you know, because uh, we're only threatening. Uh, we're all right, we're, we're having shots now. Uh, always have been with having the team, and uh, maybe, yeah, but when you're going for left and right with the wings and, and corner kicks, you have to decide how you're going to do it. And as you say, you can mix them up as well. Yeah, it's more about that, I think, Ox. It's just the variation. When you constantly put the same bo- same ball in from either side, um, then, you know, if it's just not working, then surely you would have maybe a choice of maybe four or five corners. And, um, you know, but we don't, we don't seem to. But it could be a combination of the delivery plus... The people that are supposed to be getting on the end of them are not quite getting to the ball. I think it's probably a combination of all of it. But you're right about the shots, and I would like. I mean, B. Diamandi hit a couple of goals from out. A couple, he scored a couple of goals when he first um, came into the team there from from outside the box. But so maybe he's due another one. He was a wee bit unlucky with the one um, on Saturday he had. Um, it was just after the penalty incident it came out to me and he had a decent shot but um, that's if he starts on Sunday I think he will I think the manager yeah. will start on him I just said the map opinion you know yeah you know, uh, but I, I'm, listen I'm not saying we should score for every corner kick Jay, I'm, I'm just saying you should be creating opportunities or the goalkeeper should be making saves we're, we're doing none neither yeah it should look dangerous to look like or even Sometimes sometimes you try something from the training ground and it don't quite come off, but there's been an idea, hasn't there? It, like you said, it's not always perfect or whatever. Or, But we don't seem to have our players in the right areas. If it is an outswinger, to, if you're outswinging it to me, someone's got to be running across the front post. All our players are at the back. We're taking corners and our the corner's got to go past eight defenders before it gets to one of our players. There's just... There's just something. There's just. There's obviously something missing. They must work on them. All teams work on them, but it's not quite paying off. Whatever they're trying to work out. Mm-hmm. And I'm also not too. And I've also think teams are starting to work us out from a defensive point of view on the set pieces as well, which I'm a bit concerned about on the weekend. I think we're very predictable in where our defenders line up. We kind of just cover that six yard area, and a lot of teams are just hanging back in a lot of free spaces. Right, because we're we're going zero. We're, we're just going zone across that six yard maybe because yeah. we're and not blessed you, with height and then you're just trying to drop it into the back post it's, it's the same argument for what we're doing with the set the, the, the attacking corners if you do the same thing all the time teams will work you out yeah well it's no a criticism of the gaffer he's done brilliant but it's an observation no yeah you've got to, I mean, you've got to be fair it's not staying there set, well, I'm not saying to get rid of him I can't imagine we've conceded many from set pieces but Anything like that, but it's just you start watching it and you see, you see, you think sometimes you think, did, was that good defender? Did we get a bit lucky? Did we nick, you know, did we get a bit of luck because that didn't quite come off? 
And sometimes I think when we're lining up with all our big men on the just on the six yard box and you're left with maybe Ridvan and Diamande just stopping their centre backs, you're taking a chance. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Big part of the game, Linda. Set pieces. Yeah, it is Ox and I don't know about them if they score many goals from set pieces. I, I don't really tend to, to pay too much attention. I know that they concede goals. They've conceded more than us um, in the league anyway. Um, but a lot of the goals that we've con- we've conceded have just been a, a long ball up up top and we've not we failed to deal with it. Um, either the bounce of the ball or even if you if you look with well, somebody's, you know, gathered the ball and then we've kind of a dived in and the next minute, you know, we've not got the break of the ball and somebody's toe poked it into the net. Um I think their tactics will be slightly different because they'll they'll want to play a bit of football, I would imagine. Um but as I said earlier, Ox, I would just like us not to give any goals away through silly mistakes or misplaced passes. And if the opposition are going to score against us, make them earn it. Um, but hopefully that won't come into it. And as we've said earlier, we got on the front foot and we, we get a couple of a couple of goals and get ahead in the game. Yeah, 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 right. Well, sir, it's gonna be nervy, I think. You know, I think most of these games are. I mean, it's all about big moments, Jayan. Yeah, hundred, hundred percent taking chances. Get like I think we said earlier, a little bit of luck. Sometimes the ball just bounces for you, whether it be a scramble from a corner or just bounces away. A, a decision, a fifty-fifty decision can go your way, can go against you. There's a lot of things, but um, you just hope when you get a moment where it be a clear moment, like a like a Dessa's one-on-one or the Amanda swings a boot, that it, it goes your right way. But um, no, I'm looking forward to it. Nervous, but looking forward to it, and it's a chance for us to really sort of cement our place. Oh, I it'll be a different problem. Of course, it'll be getting everybody off the ceiling and then concentrating on Wednesday for getting a result on Sunday. On it will, <laughs> it will. I know. Obviously, after Sunday, we'll get two, two. I mean, all, all away games are tricky. When you think about, um, you know, getting Sunday out the way, and then you've got to just go. You've got to just. You know, go and, and go on a run. You know, go and, and win. See, if you, I mean, imagine if we just went ahead and we just won all the the, the remainder of the games, Ox. You know, I know that it's, it can be a tall ask. It's at the end of the season. But, you know, when you think about it, we've got the manager in place that can take us there. And, um, and as we said earlier... Well, you know, what he's done with this squad of players has has been quite unbelievable considering where we're at when he he came in and what he's managed to get out of most of them and the injuries that he's dealt with. But um yeah, all, all cup finals going forward and it's just it just it's been a good season so far and Clement's done really, really well, but it could be absolutely wonderful, couldn't it, this season? Aye. Uh, that's 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 the thing. We're, we're there, JM, and we'll go. We can see it, but it doesn't matter. You've got to grab it. Yeah, it could easily it could easily go wrong as well. By the way, it could easily go wrong. You've got to go and you've got to go and commit to it. Having you could start when your game. Linda says, "Gate could win all our games. Easy, you know, we could win all our games, and that's that. That sounds nice, but you know, we could easily we could easily drop a few, and you're still in the." title race that's how close it is at the moment that's how close it is it might be you know there might be a couple of turns before before it finishes so I don't know if excited is the right word I'm dreading it I think 55 was more enjoyable but it's different than something maybe we're not used to for a long time yeah yeah what well, once every few years and suddenly there's a conspiracy right what are you going to say, Jay? We've mentioned nearly every player apart from Ross McCausland. Is there a reason for that? Well, we've, we've not talked about John Lundstrom. We've not really mentioned a lot of Jack Butland, if we're honest. He doesn't have to speak about it. Yeah, yeah. True, true. But as in, we're talking, well, more because we're talking about Sterling, Scott Wright. Is, do you think Ross has got half a chance for the weekend? Or? 
I think you'll be involved in the squad, Linda. Yeah, I think he was he was really quite unfortunate getting that injury and you know, it's um, it was quite a, a nasty one for him, hasn't it? I mean, he didn't get, you know, he, he, he would have probably played for Northern Ireland there and it kept him out of their games. Um, maybe just because he's had the injury, um, I don't I don't see him starting the game. Um, but he might, as, as Ox said, Jay, he might have a part to play. Um, so we're narrowing down all this, these, who's going to start on that right-hand side. And, you know, if it's, if it's not going to be young Ross at, I don't know. It looks as if it might be a toss up um, between Scott Wright and Dujon Sterling there, probably. Do you think you'll start, Jayan? I don't. I tend. I think. I think he'll feature, but I don't think he'll start. We could do a rolling subs for the weekend, can we? We could. Subs. We could do with some rolling subs or something, I think. We? It's, not, it's not quite got enough, but not the fitness, have we? I think your feature he seems to have featured in most, hasn't he? I think he'll feature, I don't, maybe of the injury in that. Yeah, I don't think he'll he'll start. He hasn't seemed to have, he hasn't put, I don't know, the last time he played an hour or anything like that. Obviously, with the injury and whatever. Yeah, it'll be interesting. By the way, that was assault, Linda. Assault. I know. Uh, it was an awful challenge. Did the guy not even get a booking? And you've got VAR there as well. It was um, it was an awful challenge, and the guy knew exactly what he was doing. Um, I it was it was awful, and it could have been a lot more serious. But it, but then again, it's it has affected him for a number of weeks now. Um, but no, he came on. I think he played maybe the last twenty five minutes or something in Saturday Ox, didn't he? When he came on for for Barisic to then put Sterling back to left back. So the first swap on Saturday was Sterling come on for Scott Wright. So to me, that if, if, if Sterling is going to start, I think it's probably going to be there. And, and it would be Scott Wright that would maybe be on the bench. I'll be interested. I'll be interested. You know, if you think about it, you imagine bringing Wright, Matondo and Silver on to replace your top three. It's, it's pace, isn't it, to be worried about right away, isn't it? Uh, you know. space. And the manager will be thinking about that as well, won't he? Unfortunately, yeah. it's not. I know you got to get pick your best team in start, but it is definitely a game for at least four substitutes now, isn't it? And time well, is that's got, that's got to come into the thinking now, I imagine. Well, we've reached that time of the evening. Uh, thanks to everybody who fought in the night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a compliment that we don't done made a good show or people are otherwise engaged in it. There's still the holiday period, we know that, for a lot of people. But uh, thanks to your good self, Wanda. Yeah, I enjoyed being on, Ox. Great to chat uh, with you and JM. It's always good to talk about Rangers. I just want a victory on Sunday, so please, please, Rangers, just go out and win. Please. JM. Yeah, it was good to be on, guys. Good to build up. Maybe not good for the mental health talking about it so soon, but long way to go this week, but looking forward to it. And remember, if you want to win a ticket, uh, go to shop.rangersradio.online, click on the Emily Smiley charity link, uh, pick your number, if it's still available, or let you do it, add to cart. Yeah, it's, it's that simple. Add to cart. And then I want to see view card if it's correct. Yes. Proceed to check out. Pull in your personal details. Proceed to PayPal. If you've not got PayPal, just use your debit or credit card. If you've got PayPal and it's sent to us, nobody sees your details. Nobody sees your details. Simple, and you've got a chance of winning a ticket for the big match on Sunday. And, you know, you might meet people you all meet. Big Stevie for the drum. So, listen, thanks to Linda and JM for doing the show. Fox and Old School Blue for doing the technicals. This has been Rangers Radio. We'll be back tomorrow night between 8 and 10 talking about all things Rangers. Take it away. Old School Blue. <laughs>